So let's take a look at related rates and optimization problems. So starting with number one, two numbers, two positive numbers have a sum of 60. What is the maximum product of one number times the square of the second number? So the very first step to solving these kind of problems is figuring out what your variables are. And since it says that two positive numbers have a sum of 60, I can label those positive numbers as two different variables. So since those two have a sum of 60, I can say that x plus y equals 60. And notice how it also says, what is the maximum product of one number times the square of the second number? So if my one number is x, and it needs to be multiplied by the square of the second number, I can just do x times y squared equals, it's, saying, it's asking for the maximum product, so I'm just going to just call it p max for the maximum product. So now the next step is to isolate a variable in one of the equations and then sub it into the other equation. So a good rule of thumb is whichever equation is defined, that's the one you start with. So notice how x plus y is equal to 60. 60 is defined and it's a clear number while the p max or the maximum product is not defined yet. So we'll start with x plus y equals 60 and you can either isolate x or y, it doesn't really matter that much, but in this case it will be easier to isolate x and then sub it in 4x on the bottom equation. So if x plus y equals 60 then x is going to equal to 60, you can subtract y so we get 60 minus y and now I can sub it in 4x so then we'll get 60 minus y, which is equal to x, times y squared is equal to the maximum product. And so I'm just going to go ahead and distribute the y squared. So we'll get 60y squared minus y cubed equals the maximum product. Now the next step is to differentiate the equation and set it equal to zero. So if p is equal to 60y squared minus y cubed, then p prime, or the derivative of p, is going to be equal to the derivative of 60y squared, which is 120y, minus the derivative of y cubed, which is 3y squared. So now that I've derived the equation, I can set p equal to, or p prime equal to 0. So then 0 will equal 120y minus 3y squared. What I can do next is factor out a y or a 3y, so I'll get 0 equals 3y times 40 minus y. And now that I have it factored, I can set both of these factors equal to 0. So if 3y equals 0, then y equals 0 over 3, so 0. And then if 40 minus y is equal to 0, then negative y is equal to negative 40 and then y is going to be equal to 40. So notice how we have two y values but the problem is that we can only have one and if you look back at the problem it's asking for the maximum product of one number times the square of the second number. If we have y equaling 0 then the maximum product would be 0 which wouldn't make any sense because if you multiply anything by 0 you still get 0. So the y has to be 40. So now what we can do now that we've found y is we can plug it in back to a simple equation like this one and we can find out what x equals. So if x equals 60 minus y and y is 40 then x will equal 60 minus 40. So then x is going to be equal to 20. And now that I've found my two numbers it's asking once again for the maximum product of one number times the square of the second number. So all I have to do is plug those back into this equation to find the maximum product. So xy squared equals p max. So let me write this equation once more. So now I can just plug in my x and y variables. So x is 20. So 20 times y is 40. 40 squared equals the maximum product. 40 squared is 1600, so 20 times 1600 is going to give you 
32,000. And that is the maximum product. So now on to number two, what is the maximum area of a right triangle with hypotenuse 10? So when it comes to problems that deal with shapes, it's very helpful to actually draw out your diagram or any picture relating to the shape. So we can draw a right triangle here. What is the maximum area of a right triangle with the hypotenuse being 10 units? And I'm just going to label these side, uh, the sides of the, the other sides of the triangle as x and y because we'll need that in our formula. So the formula, we need two formulas for this. The first one is the area because we know that the tr area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. Or in this case, it's going to be x times y divided by 2. So that is going to be the area. And that is going to be the maximum area, since that is what we're trying to find. And the next thing we can use is the Pythagorean theorem, where a squared plus b squared equals c squared, since it applies to a right triangle. So we can say that x squared plus y squared equals c squared, or the hypotenuse squared, which is 100. 10 squared is 100. Now the first step, since 100 is defined and the maximum area is not, we're actually going to start with the 100 equation and isolate one of the variables. And in this case, it'll be easier. There's not really easier to isolate one variable or the other. So I'm just going to pick uh, y. So then y squared is going to be equal to a 100 minus x squared. And in order to isolate y, we obviously have to take the square root. So then y is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 100 minus x squared. Now we're getting plus or minus, but remember that y is, in this case, is only going to be positive. So we can take out that minus. So then y is going to be equal to only a positive 100 minus x squared. So now that we have found what y equals, we can sub it in to the other y equation, or the other equation that includes y. So we'll get x times y, which is equal to the square root of 100 minus x squared. over 2 is going to be equal to the maximum area. And now obviously the next step is to derive. So a prime, actually I'm going to rewrite this first. So a is going to be equal, I'm going to actually bring the 1 half out front because it's a constant and it'll help us when we derive. So 1 half times x times the square root of 100 minus x squared. So now when I derive I can just keep the constant out and multiply by one half later on after I'm done deriving. So a prime is going to be equal to one half times. Now we're deriving x times the square root of 100 minus x squared. And I'm actually going to rewrite uh, 100 the square root of 100 minus x squared into 100 minus x squared to the one half power because now it'll be easier to use the power rule. So we're going to have to use the product rule. So remember, the derivative of the first term multiplied by the second untouched. The derivative of x is just 1 times the second, which is 100 minus x squared to the 1 half, plus the derivative of the second term times the first term untouched. So we get x, x times the derivative of 100 minus x squared to the 1 half, which is going to be the, using the power rule, so 1 half times 100 minus x squared to the negative 1 half, because we have 1 half minus 1, times the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of 100 minus x squared is negative 2x. So I'm just going to enclose these in parentheses. So when I simplify this, a prime is going to be equal to 1 half times 100 minus x squared to the 1 half, or the square root of 100 minus x squared, plus, now, notice how these twos will cancel. 
and then we'll have a negative x squared times 100 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. So then if I were to simplify even further, we'll get a prime is going to be equal to 1 half times 100 minus x squared to the 1 half power. Now that minus can come out front and replace the plus sign, so we have minus x squared over, since this is a negative exponent, we can bring that to the denominator. So we'll get 100 minus x squared to the 1 half power. So continuing on, I'm just going to rewrite everything so that it's a little bit easier to see. So we get 1 half times the square root of 100 minus x squared minus x squared over the square root of 100 minus x squared. So next what I need to do is combine these two terms. And in order to do that I just need to find a common denominator. And this one's pretty simple because a common denominator is just the square root of 100 minus x squared. And all I need to do is multiply this term um, by the square root of 100 minus x squared over the square root of 100 minus x squared in order to get that common denominator. So we'll get 1 half times, so we have our term, the square root of 100 minus x squared. In order to get common denominators, I can just multiply by the square root of 100 minus x squared over the square root of 100 minus x squared minus our second term here, so x squared over the square root of 100 minus x squared. So now when I do this, when you multiply the square root times another square root of the same term inside, they'll just cancel. So the square root of 100 minus x squared times the square root of 100 minus x squared is just 100 minus x squared. So we'll get 1 half times 100 minus x squared over that same square root minus x squared over, once again, that same square root. Now since they have common denominators, I can put them under the same fraction. So we'll get 1 half times 100 minus x squared minus x squared over the square root of 100 minus x squared. Okay, and then if I were to simplify again, we'll get 100 minus 2x squared over the square root of 100 minus x squared. So then if I multiply this complex fraction by 1 half, and that 2 will just end up staying there. And then what I can do on the numerator is factor out a 2. So we'll get a 2 times 50 minus x squared over 2 times the square root of 100 minus x squared. And notice that the 2's will cancel. So then I'll rewrite it one more time as 50 minus x squared over the square root of 100 minus x squared. And remember that is equal to our a prime since we derived that equation. And now the next step is to make a prime equal to zero. So if I just replace a prime with zero, the good thing about this is we can just multiply this bottom denominator over and it'll still equal zero. So we'll get 50 minus x squared is equal to zero. So then negative x squared is equal to negative 50 x squared is equal to 50. So then x will equal plus or minus the square root of 50. Since x is positive, we don't have to worry about the negative. So x is going to equal to the positive square root of 50. And if I were to simplify square root of 50, I can just rewrite it as uh, the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. So 5 times the square root of 2. 
So now that I've found x, I can plug it in to one of the above equations. So then I'll plug it in to this one because then I can find what y equals. So if x squared plus y squared equals 100, the x squared, or that value squared, will be 25 times 2, which is 50. So 50 plus y squared equals 100. Then y squared equals 100 minus 50. And then y is going to equal the exact same value as x, the square root of 50, which can be simplified to 5 times the square root of 2. So once again, the problem asks us to find the maximum area. And so we can use this equation now that we have found x and y. So x times y over 2 is going to be our maximum area. So our x value is 5 times the square root of 2. And our y value is the exact same. So 5 times the square root of 2 times 5 times the square root of 2 x times y over 2 equals our maximum area. So then our maximum area is going to be 5 times the square root of 2 times 5 times the square root of 2. So 25 times 2, which is 50, over 2. And then area is going to be equal to 25.